Okay, thank you very much for your introduction and uh, for your invitation. Uh, I'm Jian Huang from Huachong University of Science and Technology. Now I would like to present my recent work about the human-robot interaction and control algorithms of intelligent walking aid robots. Uh, there are six parts. Okay, I only have uh, 30 minutes, so I would like to present uh, a little quickly, okay. Uh, this is a background, and I know. I think uh, everyone knows that uh, both developed and developing countries are facing the aging society problem, and uh, there are more and more uh, elderly and uh, people aged six and over in China and in other countries. Uh, and more than uh, 33 million of the aged people are motion handicapped uh, in China. As for the uh, disabled people, there are nearly 83 million disabled persons in China, and uh, one third of them have dysfunctions in limbs. Uh, uh, normal walking, uh, is, I think, is one of the most important uh, activity uh, among uh, in uh, human daily life, but uh, due to the uh, diseases and accidents, there are many kinds of abnormal gait, and this kind of gait may cause falling down, and falling down is very, very dangerous for elderly people. So we need to take effective measures for aiding these people walking. And uh, this is the definition of the level of assistance and the care surface. Uh, this was de defined by the Japanese government, so it, it is in Japanese. And as you can see, the first two level, for the first two levels, we uh, these people need uh, slight assistance from uh, other others. So maybe one cane is enough for them. And for the medium levels, uh, maybe we need a walker to help these people to walk. But for the, uh, the most serious one, uh, in this case, maybe a wheelchair and uh, uh, a caregiver to help uh, these people. Uh, and the scientific research shows that uh, walking aid robots can, uh, compared with the traditional walking technical aids, uh, robots can uh, uh, perform better uh, in many aspects. So. Uh, I think it is necessary to study working aid robots to complement and replace traditional tactical aids. So in, in my lab, I developed uh, three kinds of working aid robots uh, com, uh, corresponding to these three, uh, three kinds of uh, assistance level. We developed the intelligent cane robot, uh, working aid robot. Uh, the second one is the walking, walking aid robot is just like an intelligent walker. And, and the third one is the exoskeleton. Uh, this is the first type of our walking aid robot. Uh, this project was started very early in 2008 when I was a postdoctor in Nagoya University in Japan. And uh, uh, this eye cane is also very simple. It has a uh, omnidirectional mobile base, and there are some sensors. Uh, for example, four sensors uh, was used to measure the human robotic, uh, human robot interactive force, and uh, some laser region finders to use to measure the distance between the uh, uh, human and the robot. And uh, uh, this is the second type of intelligent cane, cane I cane two. Uh, uh, in this case, we just uh, uh, added a joint, uh, a special joint to prevent the human falling down. And this is the second type of walking aid robot. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, uh, it's more like an intelligent walker. Uh, we started the project from 2011, and uh, also we designed the four uh, walking aid robots, uh, this kind will have four. And uh, this is the second uh, type two, uh, uh, some experimental videos of these this robots. 
Um, and it is very similar to the Kane robot. Uh, this kind of robot has a mobile uh, and omnidirectional mobile base, so it can help people uh, walk, uh, uh, going straight forward, or moving laterally, turning around. And also, this robot can help people climb the slope. And in uh, 2014, we designed the Type 4 of this kind of robot. We uh, cooperated with some company people. We added the handle, safe, uh, safe belt, and uh, also we uh, embedded a uh, laser refiner to detect the, the, the obstacles. And uh, this is also the uh, some uh, experimental videos of, of this robot. And the Type 4 robot can uh, help people uh, normal walk in uh, uh, open environment, uh, as shown in the left in the left video. Uh, uh, it can also uh, detect the dynamic obstacle and plan a safe trajectory and uh, guide the user to walk along the safe trajectory to avoid the obstacle. Uh, this is the type 4 walking aid robot. And uh, as for the third type uh, walking aid robot uh, is the exoskeleton. And I think it is not so uh, uh, it's not so special because I think there are many kinds of uh, exoskeleton so far. In our lab, we develop an exoskeleton driven by pneumatical muscle. Uh, maybe this is the, the, the only difference between uh, our proposed system and uh, a very well-known exoskeleton called the Locomat. Uh, maybe you know, know it, okay. Uh, this is the actual uh, skeleton experimental video. Uh, for the first uh, version, we embedded the uh, pneumatical muscle inside of the exoskeleton, so it looks very heavy. And the user, uh, actually, uh, these users are all are my students, and they, they don't think it is safe, and they don't don't like it. Okay. So uh, we improved the design and uh, we put all the axles, uh, all the animatical muscles outside uh, in a special frame. Then the uh, human subject can wear a, a very light exoskeleton. Uh, it, it looks uh, safer for, for human robot interaction. Okay, uh, this is uh, our uh, robotic uh, my platform. Uh, next, I would like to present some, uh, I think, some uh, uh, key technologies uh, in the human robot interaction in the working aid robot. Um, I think maybe the most important thing is how to sense the motion intention of the user. Uh, the voluntary motion intention from patients plays an important role in robotic. Uh, in robot-assisted therapy. Uh, but the question is, how can we accurately measure motion intention online? Uh, this is an open, uh, until now, it is still an open question for our uh, scientists and engineers. Uh, but there are many, many kinds of methods to uh, sense the motion intention of human. Uh, all of them have, have both advantages and, and disadvantages. And in our case, uh, similar to the previous presentations uh, in the morning, I think uh, we like the four sensors. Uh, normally, we, we use four sensors to measure uh, the human-robot interactive force, uh, and this is called a uh, physical human-robot interaction. And uh, a very normal uh, uh, admittance control can be applied in uh, the uh, walking aid robot. Uh, I think most of uh, them, uh, uh, maybe you, you know it very well, and uh, because uh, we, when we uh, design a controller for the worker, uh, maybe the first choice the, is the admittance controller. Uh, this controller is very simple. The input is the 
interaction force between human and the robot, the output is the desired velocity of the robot. But in my opinion, I don't think the uh, the conventional admittance model uh, is a good choice because it doesn't consider the intrinsic nature of the human intention. Uh, it is very apparent, but it, it, it doesn't consider deep. So uh, first I would like to uh, model the motion intention, and that is we need to quantify the motion intention. Uh, this is the first step to uh, design more uh, useful and more complex controller. Okay. Uh, actually, there is a very famous research about the uh, relationship and uh, between the uh, motion direction and the, the neuron activities. Uh, it was reported in Science in uh, 1986. Uh, it's very early. Uh, the scientists find that uh, there's a strong relation between the motion direction and uh, the neuron activities. So I think uh, uh, because the neuron reflect, reflect the human motion intention, uh, then we can use the motion direction to uh, describe the, uh, the motion intention. So we propose a concept called the intentional direction. Uh, uh, it is abbreviated as ITD. Uh, the explanation of ITD is very simple, as you can see. When a human, walk, when a human walks, uh, if he wants to walk along an ITD, this ITD can be described by an angle. Uh, here is the angle rho, the angle between x and y and the direction of ITD. Okay, based on this definition, we can uh, uh, propose some model, uh, including a state model and a measurement model, uh, to describe the dynamics of ITD. For example, in the uh, go straight, uh, going straight, uh, straightforward, uh, in this walking mode, uh, we can assume the ITD is a constant. Uh, and uh, in the turning around case, uh, we can assume the ITD decreases gradually. So uh, in these two cases, we can use two different state equations to uh, describe the dynamics of ITD. And uh, 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 also we can use uh, the measurement equation to uh, describe the, how we can measure uh, the ITD. Uh, this this is because we need to use filter technology to online uh, obtain ob obtain the the uh, real motion intention. Okay, if we uh, list all possible working mode for each mode, we can have one uh, state equation and one measurement equation. Then a uh, unified switching system model can be obtained. And based on this model, uh, I think uh, we, we can use the common filter or something like that to online get the human intention. About the measurement equation, uh, uh, due to the time limitation, I, I just passed this very quickly. Uh, it, it's also very simple. Uh, for the exoskeleton, we can embed some four sensors uh, in the, uh, for example, in the ring, ring of side or ring of leg to measure the human, ro uh, human robot in the active force. And, and for the worker, intelligent worker, we also can use the uh, one dimensional force sensor to uh, measurement the human interactive force. And the human interactive force can reflect the intentional direction, and that is the ITD. Uh, we can establish the measurement equation very uh, easily. Okay, uh, based on the uh, state equation and the measurement equation, then we can use the common filter to uh, estimate the ITD online. And uh, uh, this online estimated ITD can be used to generate control references then. Uh, as a summary, and uh, I think my basic idea can be summarized in this figure. Uh, first, we measure the human robot interactive force. Then, uh, with the state 
equation and measurement equation, we can apply Kama filter to online uh, estimate the human uh, intentional direction. Then with the inter uh, online is estimated in ITD, we can propose some ITD based control. Uh, here, uh, I would like to uh, introduce how we design an ITD based control. Uh, the basic idea uh, is also very simple. So first, uh, I think most of you know the conventional admittance control. Uh, the con uh, conventional admittance control, uh, we just uh, push on the mass, the mass M. Uh, then uh, the mass M will, will generate a, a velocity V REF. Uh, and the, the relation between the input f and the output velocity is uh, one, uh, one order transfer function. Uh, it's very easy. But actually, in our, uh, in my opinion, we can use the ITD to uh, direct us how to design the, uh, the admittance model. And I think the admittance model should differ in the ITD and the direction perpendicular to the ITD. Uh, this is very easy uh, to be thought because uh, in the ITD, the people will feel comfortable if the walking aid robot is easily maneuvered in the ITD and hardly maneuvered in the direction perpendicular to the ITD. So if we can design this kind of uh, admittance controller, uh, the people will think uh, the robot is very easily uh, maneuvered and uh, he like it. Okay. And uh, uh, for the measurement equation, we also uh, verify the, the uh, measurement noise. Uh, okay, this is the uh, covariance of the measurement uh, uh, noise. We uh, conducted some experiments and we found that the conver covariance, uh, covariance Q is not direction uh, related, okay. So the same common field can be used to online estimate uh, estimate all the ITD in uh, various direction. And we uh, conducted some experiments uh, using our proposed IBAC controller. And uh, this is two scenarios, experiment scenarios, and uh, uh, these two figures shows the comparison results. Uh, so you can see the red one, red curve, uh, is the result of the uh, trajectory when using IBAC, uh, which is proposed by us. And then the blue one shows the uh, results when using the conventional admittance control. Uh, it is easily shown that uh, the our uh, when using our proposed IBAC controller, the uh, system will run smoothly uh, and the value of D is 20% smaller than that uh, when using the CAC. Okay. And next I would like to present some recent result of human following control. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, it is not the physical human robot interaction because in this case, the human doesn't lead touch the cane robot. So uh, assisting and uh, supervising daily long durational walking is very important for patients, uh, especially, especially in the stage of recovery towards a state of walking independently. So uh, in this study, we apply our cane robot uh, just to follow the human, uh, follow the user and uh, supervise uh, his walking state. Uh, but uh, uh, there are some limitations in current methods. Uh, for example, the vision and the MU-based method uh, is not suitable because the patients normally they doesn't want to wear anything, and also there's some privacy. Uh, the difficulties uh, in our case we we don't use any wearable sensors in in this study. Uh, we only use the laser range finder in the, ro in the robot to detect the human and the distance between the human and the robot. But the problem is uh, how can we calculate the human orientation during the walking? 
and then another uh, another thing is how can we design a robot controller to maintain the fixed relative postures between the human user and the robot in real time. Uh, in this uh, study, we also used the pain robot, uh, uh, but we uh, here we should control the robot to follow the human uh, and uh, to keep the relative posture between human and the robot uh, as a constant. So here we define uh, three variables including QD, QR, and QH. Here the QD uh, is the uh, relative uh, postures. Okay, uh, this is the control architecture of our cane robot. And uh, normally uh, we walk, we, uh, the robot works in the walking aid mode, uh, that is uh, normal. But in this study, the robot walk, works in the following mode. Uh, then the robot just following the human user and uh, uh, try to keep the distance and the posture between the robot and the human as a constant. Okay, this is the concept of a human following system. And the, the uh, also the key technology is how to sense the uh, human's motion intention. Uh, it is very similar to our previous study. Uh, so here we passed it very quickly. And uh, we also use some uh, special equipment, the uh, op track to measure the uh, status uh, of human and the robot. Uh, this can be used as a, a, a gold standard uh, for comparison. And uh, first we compare the estimated online human intention and uh, uh, the, uh, the normal conventional and the normal uh, uh, admittance control. And as you can see, uh, when we use our method to estimate the human intention, the error, uh, the absolute means and the standard uh, deviation of human motion detection and estimations are uh, better than the uh, conventional method. And uh, we also uh, did some experiments uh, in different walking modes, for example, walking forward and backward, and uh, walk laterally. And uh, uh, step turn. And the spin turn. Okay, in all these walking modes, the robot can follow the human very well. And uh, uh, because we, uh, our main uh, purpose is to make the robot can follow some patients. So we ask uh, uh, my students to pretend some uh, patients. Uh, but uh, this may be easier than, than uh, uh, the case of following uh, health people because the, normally the patient can walk slowly, uh, can only walk slowly. So in uh, different walking mode, the robot can follow the, the human very well. Okay, uh, uh, also we compared the uh, controller performance of our proposed controller and some other controller. Uh, here we use the PID, a free mode control, and the virtual spring control. Uh, this is three conventional controllers compared with our proposed controller. As you can see, the uh, tracking errors uh, also are better than, than them. Okay, finally, I would like to present some recent results about using the walking aid robot to uh, analyze the gate, uh, analyze and evaluate the gate. Uh, the gate an uh, analysis and the evaluation are vital for the clinical diseases, uh, diagnosis, and the treatments. And also, there are many, many methods. Uh, currently, there are uh, many methods to analyze the human gait now. Uh, but I think uh, these methods have their own limitations. 
Uh, for example, the uh, uh, virtual inspection is hard to obtain accurate gain uh, data and uh, wearable sensors and the patient doesn't like uh, the wearable sensors. And uh, for the motion capture system, uh, for, example, for example, Vicon or OptiTrack, uh, this kind of system are very you know, expensive. Okay, and uh, uh, it has the space limitation to be used. So in our uh, uh, opinion, we think we can use the walking aid robot to analyze the human gait. Uh, so it can be used for uh, different functions. It can be used for walking aid, uh, for walking assistance. Also, it can um, be used for uh, analyze the human gait. And in this study, we uh, uh, use two laser region binders in our cane robot. Uh, this is because we can uh, we cannot calculate the human gate parameters by using only one laser region finder. Uh, even if we use two, there are some difficult uh, difficulties. Uh, for example, uh, only scan uh, horizontal distance information, it is difficult to obtain the accurate three-dimensional uh, gate parameters uh, using the laser range finder. And uh, uh, with the two laser range finders, we also can, uh, we cannot directly detect the gate events too. So uh, how can we uh, measure, how can we identify the different gate events uh, by using these two laser range finder? It's also a very uh, uh, difficult question. Um, uh, here we uh, propose a simple uh, geometric method to calculate the uh, human gait parameters. Uh, as you can see from these figures, the two laser region finders, uh, each of them can scan the human leg uh, in, uh, on one plane. So uh, for each plane, we can uh, obtain uh, uh, several feature points. Then, based on the feature points, we can uh, calculate the human neck parameters. Uh, uh, the concept of our proposed gate analysis and the evaluation system uh, can be described by this figure. Uh, first, we use the laser region finder to detect the motion uh, and uh, uh, we can use the previously uh, mentioned the human following control to control the robot uh, to track the human. Then we collect uh, the motion data from the human neck and uh, we can train this data. Uh, uh, of course, here we need to label the data first, then we train this data to obtain a data set. And here we use the uh, high dimensional TSK fuzzy system. Uh, this method is very efficient. Okay, with the obtained uh, uh, training, uh, train, training data set, we uh, use the online detected uh, motion data. And based on the HTSK system, we can online classify the human uh, uh, gate uh, events. As you can see uh, here, there are five events. And uh, uh, with the gate parameters and the uh, gate events, uh, the robot can evaluate the uh, uh, human's walking ability then. OK, uh, uh, this is the information of our experiments. We uh, recruited seven subjects. And uh, four of them are real patients, and the three of them are health people. And this is the videos of our experiments. Uh, first, uh, the, the first one is the health people, and uh, he uh, pretended as a um, patient. And uh, in this case, the robot followed him and uh, evaluated his gait. And uh, the left, uh, uh, three one are real patients. Uh, for example, the patient with uh, scol uh, scoliosis, the patient with right leg uh, ligament strain, and the patient with right uh, uh, hemiplegia. Uh, 
Okay, all these with all these patient experiments, uh, our uh, robots can evaluate the walking ability of these patients according to a uh, uh, a tinity table. Okay, and this is the motion data obtained by the robot. Uh, that, but this is just an example uh, of the uh, subject one. Okay, the left is the motion data of the legs, and the right one are the, uh, are the estimated uh, gait events and uh, the real gait events. And as you can see, the gait events can be uh, uh, identified very uh, accurately. And uh, uh, this is the uh, walking classification performance, and uh, we compared the several methods uh, for, or for example, SVM, KNNDT, uh, normal TSK, uh, uh, with our own proposed uh, HTSK. And uh, we find that the uh, performance are best in all these uh, methods. And uh, this is the statistical results of gate parameter errors. Uh, this, this data was com compared with uh, the results of OptiTrack. And as you can see, the errors, all the errors are satisfactory to the medical doctor, uh, medical doctor, okay. And uh, uh, this uh, bar figure shows the compare, uh, compare, comparison between the uh, working ability evaluation results of robots and uh, that of the medical doctor. And as you can see, uh, they are very similar. So the robot can act as a, a real medical doctor to evaluate the human uh, gait ability. Okay. And uh, uh, I think that's all of my uh, talk today. And uh, uh, here I listed uh, some of our publications on this research. Uh, all these results are published or accepted by some journal paper. Uh, because the uh, project was started very early, so the first publication was in IRAS 2008. Okay, finally, I would like to thank the support from NSFC, MSD, and JSPS. Uh, thank you for your attention.